last lesson, we talk about savings and the calculation of interest. Today, we want to look at investment. If you have a lot of money, you don't want to put all your money in the bank because the interest paid by the bank is not very high. A lot of people will put some of their excess money in investment. So, what can we do if you want to invest? First, you can buy shares, you can buy unit trust, you can buy real estates such as houses, buildings, lands, and others. There are many other ways to invest, such as you can buy bonds, you can buy foreign currencies, you can buy gold, even diamond, and many others. We will first look at real estates. Real estates are buildings, houses, lands, and so on. If you buy a piece of land as an investment, how do you profit from buying land? First, you can rent it out. Someone may want to rent the piece of land for agriculture or for some other purposes. That is the return from the piece of land. Next, the value of the land will increase or decrease after some time, and you profit when the value of the piece of land increase, and that is called capital gains. If you buy an apartment, you can rent out the apartment. The rental you receive will be the returns of your investment. Also, you will profit when the value of the apartment increases. And this increase in capital value is called capital gains. With so many investment options available, so how do we compare the performance of our investment? We can use returns on investment to measure the performance of our investment. Returns on investment is expressed in percentage and is calculated by the ratio of net gains to cost of investment times 100%. Let's look at the case of land. Let's say you buy the piece of land for 300,000 ringgit and you rent the land out for 2,400 ringgit per month. But you are responsible for clearing the land and level up the land for the person who rent the piece of land. And that costs you 4,500 ringgits. After one year, you sell it off for 340,000 ringgit. To find the ROI, returns on investment, first we see what are the returns. First, there is the rentals of 2,400 ringgits times 12 months, which is 28,800 ringgit. There is also the second component, which is the capital gains. The selling price is 340,000 and the purchase price is 300,000. But we need to add other costs to reflect the net capital gains. We need to include the clearing and leveling of the land of 4,500 ringgit. That is considered as a cost for the improvement of the land. In reality, there will also be legal costs, stamp duty, agent's commission, and some others. So let's say legal cost is 8,000 ringgit, stamp duty is 6,000 ringgit, and agent commission is 5,000 ringgit. So the net gain from capital is 16,500 ringgit. So the net gain of the investment here is 28,800 plus 16,500 divided by the cost of investment of 300,000. And we get 